My name is Paul Luna, and you're tuned into FMB Lunacy. I am here today with founder CEO of Full House Hospitality, Michael Tui. How are you? Great to see you, Michael. Good to see you, Paul. Tell us about Full House Hospitality. You know, Full House um, really is what was um, the, the mission was to work across multiple sectors of the hospitality industry that I have experience in. Uh, those include restaurants, specifically uh, hotels, um, specialty gourmet, retail, uh, sports and entertainment, and commercial mixed use uh, development. So there's, um, you know, I have a, a large network like yourself uh, from the industry, uh, being in the hospitality industry for many years, working across different sectors and, um, really wanted Full House to be a collaborative platform to work with like-minded experts in those various sectors to help you know, launch new projects and to help uh, fix broken ones and to help prevent people from creating broken ones and, and develop a good plans uh, uh, coming out of, the, out, of the, out of the box. So um, I think with uh, you know, myself, experience of 40 years in the industry plus other people in the network, you know, we can bring a tremendous amount of uh, experience and, and, you know, resources to the table to make a project uh, a reality and, and, uh, and successful. Um, having said that, you know, we launched in 2019. So uh, it's been, you know, 2020 was not exactly a banner year for the hospitality industry. So um, now we're in 2021 and uh, I'm optimistic that the rest of the year will, um, you know, continue to slowly build momentum so that once we, you know, get everybody vaccinated and get beyond uh, COVID-19, um, we'll, be we'll be in a better position to uh, take on new projects and, and to even start planning them now so that, um, you know, when people are traveling again and uh, going back to restaurants and, you know, doing, doing their, their uh, carrying on their life around uh, hospitality, uh, we'll be there for them. So that's... Um, in a nutshell, but uh, you know, it's also caused me to to rethink many things and to think about the uh, the real focus and, and approach. And uh, I'm currently doing that today. <laughs> Tell us a bit about your F and B background. You were a chef. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I still am at heart, but um, I'm not. A, I don't own a restaurant anymore. And that's, that's, uh, you know, not a bad thing. Um, you know, I've, I've cooked, uh, professionally for 30 years, you know, from country clubs to restaurants, to hotels, to sports and entertainment, uh, uh an arena, NBA arena. So it's kind of, um, you know, I've done lots of events over the years, but culinary training, but I did go to hotel and restaurant school in San Francisco, uh, where I got to also, learn a lot about the business side of, of the, the industry and shows, um, you know, there's many directions that you could go with that, that foundation and education, but I chose uh, the hospitality sector and specifically food and beverage. So, um, you know, uh, cooking has always been something uh, I've been passionate about. And, you know, I love working with um, uh, farmers and finding and discovering new ingredients and, uh, you know, even learning a new cuisine to, um, you know, I love uh, ethnic foods. I love spicy food. I love delicious food. And uh, as long as it's fresh, um, you know, the, it's, uh, it's fair game. Basically, um, I got to come in on the ground floor. So 2014, uh, the end of 2014, we opened in 2016. So I put together, we, we developed a sourcing charter that would, and the Kings signed, they were ecstatic, that we would source high number, 90% of what we served within the building that would come from within 150 miles of the arena. It turned out to be a $23 million a year business, and it was, um, it was, it was solid, and uh, yeah, four years of that, and now my hair is this color, and you know, and hanging in there, and uh, it, was, uh, it was unique, you know? I mean, the building sat 17,600 people, so, um, you know, I had uh, seven kitchens. We had one massive central production kitchen that had, you know, state-of-the-art equipment in it. It was, it was amazing. I had like six full combi ovens in that one. 
one uh, kitchen I had a thousand pounds southern pride smoker uh you know we had a a, a wheel in blast chiller had um you know full battery of cooking equipment had a pastry kitchen with an amazing pastry team so we did uh pastries in-house and then we had um let's see we had uh, five club lounges uh 80 82 suites and uh i had 16 stands and 40 portables in full house hospitality do you consult restaurateurs as well as incoming chefs who are unaware of the market? You know, more of the former, uh, you know, people that are, that are um, experienced in the industry, but I see a need to provide mentorship to new and younger chefs that are willing to listen and that are willing to, um, you know, look for guidance. Can you also um, help with uh, lease and contracts? Absolutely. Yeah, I've been both a, a property owner, a landlord, and I've negotiated a lot of leases, uh, you know, as well. So, um, yes. And if I if it's something that I don't know or don't understand, I, I would, you know, get a lawyer involved. So that's uh, that specializes in that. So. Moving ahead during and after coronavirus, what should restaurant operators be looking at? Digital, as well as, um, and, and really, really, you know, regardless of what segment of the restaurant industry they're in, you know, whether they're in full service, fine dining, fast casual, QSR, you know, whatever, whatever segment that is, they really need to look at their whole model, their whole footprint. Um, technology is changing at, you know, almost light speed. I mean, the things that are available today, the platforms, the, you know, the, the cloud-based systems, the, um, you know, I, I'm so amazed by the plethora of products that are on the market today and what they can do for an operation and to help improve efficiencies that did not exist you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, they, they keep getting exponentially better. What exactly is Cook's provision? So we, um, it's going to be a uh, chef uh, curated, chef approved e-commerce platform. So really the, um, it's, it's yet to be launched and it's a work in progress, um, getting closer and closer. Uh, you know, it keeps moving to the back burner sometimes, depending on my other demands that come up with, with projects and or, um, you know, I've decided, wait a minute, I'm going to pivot in this direction instead of this direction, or what exactly should it be? And initially, it was really going to be built as a dropship platform, you know, where I would partner with uh, producers that I feel good about and, and specialty, a lot of specialty food products and perhaps even small artisan producers. Um, whether they're here in the Southeast region or out in California and be able to bring it to the consumer direct and, and know that they're chef curated and chef approved, chef tested, you know, so that, and, and continue to build on that platform. And there's different, you know, educational components that can, that can be uh, attached to it. That's not exactly where I'm heading at this moment, because as I'm going through this, I started thinking I might need to have some of my own signature products on here. <laughs> and then, you know, not wanting to be in the manufacturing business, but then thinking it might be essential and then starting to think, okay, do I need to have a small commercial kitchen here that I can not only produce those things, I might also, you know, work with some small farms in the area to produce value added products for, for the farms or as well as for my platform while still doing the e-commerce side of the equation. Is there anything you would like to share with us that's important to you currently? Well, yeah, I, you know, I hope that um, everybody that is struggling in, not only in the world with uh, the pandemic, but within our hospitality industry, uh, whether it's uh, from a business point of view, from a mental point of view, from a, you know, trying to figure out the future. I just, I, I hope that, um, you know, the, the path forward will become more and more clear for everybody as we, as we you know, get through this. And, and I am optimistic that we will get through this and that we'll be able to, you know, come back even stronger. So I just hope, I wish everybody uh, 
well with that. And if I can ever be of help or a resource or something, you know, uh, Paul Luna knows how to contact me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael, would you consider yourself a lunatic? <laughs> <laughs> Only if that gets me into the club. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a trademark name already, isn't it? <laughs>